Welcome back. Are deer treating your landscape like an all-you-can-eat buffet? Today we're going to be tackling this furry foe like a deer in the headlights. I'll explore the damage they cause, when it happens, what plants they prefer, and the best way to protect your precious plants. So let's get started. Male deer rub their antlers on tree trunks to mark territory, establish dominance, and to remove the velvet from their antlers. This behavior is most common during the rutting season, which in our year is late September to early December, with peak activity in October and November. These rubs can cause deep scars, exposing the tree to diseases and insect pests, and may even girdle the tree. Deer feed on young branches, buds, and foliage, often stripping the plant down to the stubs. I see a lot of this in my apple orchard. Buck rubs and browsing on woody plants increases in the fall and early winter as natural food sources tend to decline. Severe bark removal can completely encircle the tree, cutting off the nutrient flow to the roots and eventually killing it. If you lose more than 50% of its bark, survival is not likely. Some of the preferred plant of deer include the eastern red cedar. They like to browse on the foliage and twigs during winter when of course the food is getting scarce. Then we have ewes. They're very attractive to deer, especially during the winter, though they're a little toxic to some of the other animals, but the deer don't have any problem with it. Arborvitae, especially Eastern Arborvitae, is another awfully heavily browsed plant in the winter. Many times you will see the lower part browsed up to the point where the deer can't reach anymore, and then you have the leaves toward the top. They also like apples, both cultivated and wild apples, including cultivated crab apples. And they like to feed on the buds, the young branches, and they'll even occasionally do some damage to the bark. We have a crab apple tree in our driveway, and every fall, when the crab apples fall, the deer come around 6.30 in the evening and they clean it up for us. They also enjoy certain species of maples, especially red and sugar maples. We're generally talking about the young tender shoots on young trees. They like dogwood. Now, a lot of people do not grow sumac as an ornamental plant, but if you happen to have it in your yard, they'll feed on that. Also, anything in the rose family, whether it's wild or cultivated roses. Also, aspens. They'll browse the bark and the young shoots during the winter. And then one that doesn't bother me that much, they also like willow trees. It's a fairly nasty tree in the environment, I should say in the yard. Now, the branches break off a lot. You have aphids on them, so you're sitting under the tree trying to eat some food and all kinds of stuff's dropping into your food. So that one's not a big issue for me. Since we know that the deer can do quite a bit of damage in your landscape, we need to take a look at some options as to how to control them, or at least control the damage. The first thing is fencing. Now, deer can jump up to eight feet. So if you're gonna fence your yard, you're gonna to have to have a fence at least that high. At Michigan State University, when they're fencing in an entire area, they go up to about 14 feet and you don't see deer cross something like that. Most likely, unless you have an orchard, a small orchard or a group of plants, fencing isn't usually the option. What we'll tend to do is put a fence around particular trees, which you can buy uh, the kind of fencing that they use to keep cows in or something like that, horse fencing, and um, put a cage around the plants and that will keep the deer out. Especially if, uh, if the tree is any size at all, you can put a double fence around it. They'll definitely not get into that. For smaller trees, if you don't want to put a fence, you can put tree wraps on the tree. That'll protect the trunk from buck rubs. It won't necessarily protect the upper branches from browsing. So you need to take that into consideration also. There are some repellents that you can use. One is called Deer Out and it will give you protection for about three to four months. There's another one called Bobex Concentrated Deer Repellent. This one will give you about two months protection, but once it's applied, it needs six hours to dry. So if you get a rain before it has a chance to dry, you're gonna to have to reapply it. Then there's another one called Liquid Fence Deer and Rabbit Repellent. And after you make your first application of this material, You'll repeat the process one week later and then approximately once a month thereafter. So you're going to have to apply this one more often. When you get into January and February, you won't be all that thrilled about going out there. 
Now the liquid fence will stand up to about an inch of rain per week. And if you experience more than four inches of rain at one time, which normally we don't have that kind of situation in the fall and early winter before the snow starts to fall, then uh, you're gonna have to reapply it. Snow falling on the trees is not gonna be a major problem. And when you apply these materials, you wanna be sure that the landscape material, branches and things are dry. Another product is called Hinder. This is also used on rabbits and deer. And you spray it on the foliage and you can spray it around the perimeter. It works well as long as you reapply it regularly. So be sure in all of these products, you read all the label directions and follow those directions for the best results. Now some people, my wife likes to use soap bars and she hangs soap bars in our orchard. She uses Irish Spring and what you're gonna want to do is use a soap that really has a smell to it and it will repel for a while but I have 70 trees and you basically need a bar of soap per tree so that can add up in terms of cost. You should put the soap at about the level that the deer's nose would be so we're talking about about four feet maybe three and a half to four feet. Now depending on what kind of soap you use and how long it's been out there the effectiveness will vary. You will find though that if you combine methods you'll get better results than using a single deterrent. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you like this video, please subscribe and give me a like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.